Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video, we'll talk about one of the design documents generated by the instrumentation and control guys. Uh, it's called the cause and effect. Uh, we understand that in the DCS or PLCs, you need to program it based on a document which is came from the uh, designing company or the EPC company. So one of those are the cause and effect Cause and effect does not tell the programmer how to program his PLC or the DCS. Uh, rather, we give them uh, some conditions or scenarios or status or signal values. And then we tell them when this happens, just give us this results. Close this valve, open this valve, and so on. Or stop the pump or uh, this motor. So uh, and instead of giving it in, in, uh, in, in wording or writing, we put it in an excel sheet in a form we generated this form for uh, all the cause and effects um, each project each company has a specific uh, way of expressing them but in general what we need to do is to show the device signal let's say and then we add the condition which is in this condition what's happened is do this action on this output signal or output device or this devices so instead of talking too much, let's go into a real scenario. Process guys will give you a PNID. The PNID, let's assume this is our PNID. And by the way, this PNID, we will use it in more than one video because we'll try to add and subtract from the PNID. The PNID has some notes. If we read the notes, you'll find that the guy said that you have a tank. Assume it's a water tank and you got two pumps. 200% uh, mean one is working and the other one is a standby and there is a valve uh, on a valve in front of each one of them and then you have a pressure indicator and you have an FIC and then the process guy said that if the pressure uh, is low that means you have more user opening let's say demanding more uh, flow that means the uh, pump cannot uh, deliver the required the flow so the pressure goes down if this is happens then the second pump the standby pump will kicks in and starts of course there is a startup procedure for the pump but we're not talking about this now we're talking about it in the control narrative so now the second pump is running both of them are running now assume the uh, the some of the users had stopped using your flow so that means your flow will be reduced your pressure it will be gained again and increased but in this time we will depend on the flow and we said if the flow uh, is less than a certain value for a certain time we need to stop the pump the standby pump again now if the flow rate had been reduced even further then what you do is you open the recycle valve so you have a minimum flow through your pumps now the PNID guys shows us uh, the tank and also they showed uh, some of the uh, values here they call it LL, L and H and HH that's mean you have a low low value and low value high value and high high value for the level in the tank but uh, what they wanted to do with the LL when the level goes to the below the low low level what they want to do uh, definitely we can say that you will stop those two pumps to avoid cavitation it's it's obvious but you may need to do something else but in this PNID we only know that they wanted to trip those two pumps by the way, after the uh, uh, the INC guys do the cause and effect, they send it to the process so they evaluate what the understanding of the uh, INC guys and then they agree or add or subtract or do something uh, different than the INC because at the end of the day, INC serving the process. So the process wants something, we try to present it to them. Now, what do you want to do with the high high? If the level goes into high high, you need maybe to close this valve, inlet valve. But this valve comes from a pump. You may need to trip the pump as well, upstream. So, in, in uh, this PNID, also you have a DCS, which is one square, and then you have two squares. That mean this is a 
2 squared that means it's SIS system so this is a transmitter an SIS transmitter and this is uh, SIS push buttons now the high and low um, those are alarms but if you can see here in this transmitter we have high high and low low so we are missing another transmitter for the process control which will give us the two alarms you also can generate the alarm from the SIS uh, or trip uh, transmitter as well so let, let us now look at the uh, cause and effect in the excel sheet and we will see this is the form of it but normally you have uh, a specific form for each project but this is general one so if you have a tag the low level which is the low low level with the level transmitter level transmitter you have the tag of the transmitter you have a description and you have a set point now uh, do you need a delay you may say yes I need a delay for a few seconds or not and then what if you go on the same row you'll find a T and CL you will have a, some kind of a description of what is a T and CL T it means trip or latch trip CL it means close so if you have this level reach below the, uh, this set point you need to trip the pump A and close the valve in front of the pump but also B as well uh, the uh, the pump B as well but remember that we have only one pump is running not two of them so we will put a note saying we will trip only the one which is running uh, if you have a high high you don't do anything but you close the inlet valve as we can see here so this is where you uh, put all your conditions also we have a push button which is a local ESD push button when you activate this push button it will trip and close the valve as well and also we will say if this is let's say assume the level goes more than this thing by the 5% which is a dead bend that means the low low had been acknowledged had been reset everything is fine but the word of reset is critical who is going to reset this latch so meaning to start the pump you need to have the low uh, low level cleared and also the trip also had been cleared by the operator so all, all this is thing we will put it in our cause and effect uh, the cause and effect also we we do the cause and effect for gas detectors and fire and gas systems in this case we will show let's say one building and this building has uh, some um, dampers to get the air in and then you have a gas detector in front or inside or around each one of those uh, dampers if you receive a high concentration of the uh, of a gas you want to do a couple of things you may need to stop your HVAC so you don't have any anything coming from outside and also you need to close those dampers but now you may say I need to make sure that we have a valid case that means we need two out of three of those uh, devices giving us an alarm so we can take this action another case if you have a fire detector inside a building you have let's say a pump and a motor and then you have maybe group of two three four of of the uh, fire detectors and then you will say if I have two out of three I will stop the pump I will stop the heater and so on so we, now we have another way uh, of expressing all this a very simple way we will express what we need to do in case of fire or in case of uh, smoke or whatever if you notice now so far we are using a gas detector and a smoke detector that means it is an SIS or trip signals do you use the same for process non-trip signals some people they don't do it some people will include it but normally to reduce the amount of uh, deliverables we only make cause and effect say for the uh, trip signals for SIS system so let us now look at a cause and effect had been made specifically for cause and effect you may have a different form for it but 
simply what you need to do is to list all your gas detector or your smoke or your fire uh, devices and then you will give the uh, logic what they want to do here you have three uh, gas detector so I said two out of three gas detector so the DCS or PLC guy will go in his system and create a logic a specific logic which uh, look for those three and look at the condition which is two out of three so if you have uh, an active from two of them that mean you will create an alarm and the beacon will start and the horn will start and you will close the HVAC as well stop the HVAC now if you have one of them is not working that's mean out of service the uh, the signal will be one out of two so if you have only one you will start all those activities now if you have two out of uh, service then you have only one device so your logic will be one out of one so in these kind of stuff actually you don't tell the HVAC uh, sorry you don't tell the DCS uh, designer what to do rather you tell him I need this condition happens and I need this action to be taken so whatever he would do he would do in his system and when we test his system we'll test it against what we have here uh, as the cause and effect uh, this is if you can see we put the cause and effect in a, on a graphics so you can see on the graphic you see the signal and you see if it is active or not active and what is the action you need to do so this comes exactly the same as your uh, p and uh, sorry cause and effect and we put it in a graphic so the the uh, the guy w the operator the panel operator actually can understand what caused his pump to trip or who, who uh, which signal is actually created the problem in the process or created the beacon to turn it on so he can look at the cause and effect and will, he will see uh, the cause thank you and see you in another video